I'm on a speakerphone in a hotel. Is it really bad? That's possible. If I'm going to check in with Lucy in between just to make sure I don't lose a connection because I am in this hotel and it's challenging with internet and everything going on right now. So. Okay, guys, I haven't started because uh, whatever, I haven't started it at all. So I'm yeah. just count back like 20 and then you can introduce yourself, okay? Yeah, I'll watch it. Uh, I'll watch you launch it. You tell me when and I'll count to 20. I'm doing it now, okay? <laughs> Got it. Yep. Right. Good morning and good afternoon. This is Jeff Lobb of Exit Realty. Hopefully I see a whole bunch of people piling into the session, so I'm going to give you two more seconds to load into the session. There are several hundred agents right now, it looks like, piling in. So while you're doing that, um, I am at the Inman Connect Conference. We're also taping and recording this, and I'm actually on video doing this one as well. I um, want to give you a quick heads up while you're setting up and getting ready, because the first thing you're going to need is a pad and pen, so if you don't have one, let's go get it. I'm going to apologize in advance that I'm in the Marriott at Times Square, and although we're at a technology conference right now, um, technology is challenged between cell phones and data being absolutely hammered right now. I am going to do my best to keep this conversation as clear as possible and hopefully not getting dropped off. If I do drop off, please bear with me. I will dial right back in, hopefully, and we'll continue. So, hopefully you're all settled in. Um, Lucy, you can hear me okay on your side? Yeah, you sound great. Fantastic. Okay, you can mute and I'll check in with you in a few seconds. All right, so today's topic, here we go. We're going to be talking about um, the top 11 things to master as an agent for a great 2011. And a lot of this coming from me being a realtor first and you being a realtor mind. Yeah, I'm a technology guy, but we're real estate agents first and for 22 years we've been out in the street beating the doors down. So these are my versions of what I believe the top 11 things you need to master as an agent. And I'm also going to give you a dose of reality here too. So, you know, I'm very realistic when it comes to this stuff. So there's no fluff and pie in the sky. Um, we're going to look you right in the eye. I wish I could look right through this computer. And I'm going to give it to you straight, your top 11 things. The first thing I want you to do is on your pad and note paper is start to write this down, 1 through 11. And then I want you to give a rating scheme, just like I have it here. Duplicate what I have on your screen right now, where we're going to rate from one to five what needs work, and number five being I'm absolutely the best at it. And better yet, while you're writing this down, here's what we're going to do. As I go through the 11 and share with you what I mean by the things you need to master, after we're done, part of your homework is going to be I want you to be able to give this to two or three other people in the business, colleagues, people that you've done business with, or in your own brokerage. And I want them to help rate you on the topics that we talk about to see if you really believe and your, your ratings may be a little bit skewed because it's you. I want someone else to help give you a reality check on what they feel how you fit to these categories and how you do in these 11 things. So. It's going to take a little bit of nerve here. So hopefully you've got these written down, 1 through 11. We're going to go hammer them out one at a time. we only got 30 minutes. So, yeah, I'm a little bit fast-paced, but I want to make sure that these are really important. So let's start off. Here we go. Number one, your image. And I mean this in a respectful way, by all means. Not, not necessarily what you look like. How do you fit in the field of real estate? And here's something that's really important. And these were mistakes I actually made myself back when I got started. You know, some people like to dress up in a suit and tie. Some people like to wear casual clothes. Um, some like to be in kind of khakis or sweaters. I, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, your brokerage may have a different of opinion of how you dress and your dress code, so that is the number one rule, is follow what your broker's rules are. But my personal opinion is, is to mirror your customers. Mirror your customers. If I mean, not saying you shouldn't wear a suit and tie or a nice casual jacket to the office, but if I am going out on an appointment and I am in a rural farm area, 
and the typical farm guy that I'm going to speak to is in jeans and sneakers, I might go out in some nice casual clothes and some casual dress shoes. Because if I show up with a suit and tie, I'm going to scare the, the heck out of them. I'm going to look too intimidating. And the same goes if I'm going to meet an executive and I walk in with, you know, jeans and, and a little bit too casual, they may perceive me as I'm not serious in the business. So when I say your image, I want you to think about mirroring your customer, and that could change daily. There's times you might be meeting a high-level executive and or a regular local person. They're all different, so try and find a neutral balance. You also then need to conform with what your brokers want you to feel as an image. But I want you to then rate yourself, one through five, as how do you feel honestly your image is as a professional and as a realtor. Just keep in mind, if you give this to a few other people in your brokerage or colleagues, they're also going to give you a scale of one through five, and you want to see what their honest opinion is. Now, here's the other thing you could do also. Let me just go back a second. You could also just take this ratings of one through five, and it's better to have an anonymous opinion. Maybe you don't want someone to tell you who's giving you this advice or these ratings. So maybe you slide it into the mailboxes of some people, and they don't fill their name out. So you can get a real you know, impression without having to feel awkward about who's saying maybe you're not so good at this or that. Just keep this in mind. It's going to be very helpful. So your image. Mirror your clients. Personalities. This, yeah, I'm not talking about your personality right this second. Your personality is very important. But the personality I'm talking about are your customers. If you have not taken a personality profile or the DISC system or something of this nature, learning what your customer's profile and personality is, is huge. When I say that, we have a code within our, within our exit system. We do. It's the DISC system. You're a D, you're an I, you're an S or a C. And... I just had recently two different conversations with one of our competitors. I, a broker asked me to say, hey, can you talk to these, um, these folks? They're interested in joining our company, but they want to know more about technology. And in that email was his name, and he's actually his personality type. Here's John Smith. I'm making it up. And John Smith is a D, a, a high D. I can tell he's a high D. Yet his wife is a C, a CS. Now, that helps me know exactly the information and the content that I should be giving to them and how they're going to react to my presentation. Your customers are the same way. If you go into a high D presentation at the bottom line, get to the point, no fluff stuff, and you're sitting there with data and stats, they've zoned you out already. You need to read personalities. And the opposite applies that if you go into somebody that wants all the data and how many days on market, and I want to see how many sold in the last six months, and I want it broken out by month to month, you better be prepared for that. So on your first initial appointments, you've got to get a read for personalities. And that comes with a gut check of just being able to know how to feel what people are. That's just by conversation. So that's something you really got to master to be really good in this business nowadays. Let's talk about your presence. Your presence. That's right. And I'm looking at you, but I'm also looking at a video camera at the same time. So I'm talking to you, and I'll post this up on YouTube. Your presence. Um, what do people... Think about you in the business. And this is something you might not be able to answer. You have your own opinion. I'm sure you're going to think you're great. But you need to then have someone else in your brokerage or colleague answer this. What is your presence like in this business? How are you perceived? Are you perceived as a part-timer? Are you perceived as someone who's a top producer? What do they think of you? Are you really good at what you're doing or are you kind of just flailing through? Because keep in mind, that bleeds through to your customers that bleeds through to people around you and those who might even refer business to you. You need to evaluate your personal presence. What's your marketing like? Now, some of us are really good at it. Some of us are bootstrapping. I understand the market's been tight, but I don't care what kind of marketing it is. It could be your website. Do you have a blog? Do you have a Facebook fan page? Have you, are you actually currently sending out farming material to everyone on a consistent basis? When you list a property, do you send out 100 or 200 pieces to everyone around the neighborhood, even if it's old school? Are you effectively marketing? If you say, well, you know, looking at the scale of one to five, I do it sometimes. Okay, you need to master that. Your marketing and number three, your presence, are some of the most critical things you could be doing in this business. Without marketing you, you are the business. Exit is an amazing vehicle. It's a resource. It's a tool. It's a brand. But you need to market you. And that also ties to many of the social media platforms and things we teach you. So how do you rate yourself on your marketing? And when we're all said and done, wherever you need improvements on, you've got to go seek these things to help step your game up. Your sphere. First of all, can you identify who they are? Not saying, oh, i got a bunch of friends. No. What about your colleagues? What about your people you've done business with in the past? I'm talking, do you really have a handle on your sphere? And by saying a handle, 
on your sphere, do you actually have a good database system to stay in touch with them? Do you really know everything about them? And besides a database, which is a little bit getting almost mandatory to have, you should have always had a database from the days of the 3x5 cards to now's sophisticated CRM systems, but are you connected with your sphere on social media? Are you connected with them on Facebook or LinkedIn? Do you know what they're doing on a daily or weekly basis? Because you can and you should. Because most important now is if you don't stay in touch with your sphere, somebody else will. And in today's world of being connected, I'm sorry. Loyalty is usually there, but someone else is always trying to, to grab at your business. They've met a new colleague or friend at church that's in the real estate business. They found a new person on the PTA that happens to be a realtor. And they're connecting with them, so they build a new relationship where you fell off the face of the earth. So your sphere is, not only do you, stay, do you have a contact for them, are you actually staying in touch with them? Give yourself that rating, one through five, and be honest, because that's you're the only one that can know really that, number five. Okay? Lucy, um, how are we doing on the audio? Sounding okay still? Connected good? Yep, you're great. Awesome. We're going to keep going. So far, so good. All right, so hopefully you're writing this stuff down. This is a, this is a self-reality check on what you need to master. Now we're going to go right to your colleagues. And I say right at them is, you need to talk to your colleagues. Is Do you actually have a good relationship with them? Because there's going to be a day possibly that you need their help. They're going to need you. They may want to refer business to you. They may actually want you to cover business while they're on vacation. There may be a time they just say, hey, listen, I'm a little bit too busy or I'm not going to be available. Can you work this one for me? But if you don't have that relationship with your colleagues and bonded that way, they're going to give that business to somebody else. So, yeah, you need to be a people person, but you need to create relationships within your own organization so that you guys can do business together. And there's also times in today's world, and this is also part of what we have as a culture, is we share information. There's no secrets in our world. We'll tell you what we do really well. We'll tell you what we're not so good at. And we'll find ways to help. So... You're going to need your colleagues maybe to go, hey, you know what, I just came up with a really great new app for my mobile device. Or, hey, can you show me how to use this iPhone a little bit better? Or, I need to hold an open house. Do you have any new or fresh ideas on what to do? That's the relationship you need to master within your own organizations, your colleagues. They could be just as important to you as your customers. And that's a relationship you need to create and develop. So work on that. Master that. <laughs> my favorite is your savvy. And I mean you're tech savvy. Now, I don't want you to be technologists. I always say this. I don't want you to be just a bunch of tech gurus that blog yourself to death or out of the business. I want you to be savvy enough so that when you go on appointments, you can do presentations effectively. And here's where I know you're going to score yourself poorly. But that's okay. This is my mission for this year, too. Can you demonstrate technology to your clients? And I'm going to say this again. This is where you're going to rate yourself right now. Yes, you might have a smartphone, you might have bought, you might have got a tablet for holiday, you might have started engaging some new stuff, you might use virtual tours, fantastic. When you go on that next listing of pre presentation, call it this weekend, can you demonstrate all of the tools you're going to use to market their home? Can you show them that? And if you can't, that's the need for improvement. That's what you need to master today to absolutely blow the competition away. Talking about what you do is great, but now show it to me. That's where you need to work on. So if you are a two or three in that category, I want to help you work on that. You need to work on that. But your savvy is just starting to engage in this stuff. Let's get involved. Let's not get overwhelmed by it. Take one step at a time, but give yourself a rating on your savviness, and let's see if we can help you there. You need to master that today, because guess what? It's not going away. It's not going to change. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, rules and, and statistics are saying, in the next five years, this is not meant to scare you guys, and I mean this genuinely, in the next five years, what we're doing today in technology will absolutely be dwarfed what's going to happen in the next five years. We will be absolutely all mobile, absolutely all mobile. Brokerages are going to be coming differently as far as being accessed with different tools. We as agents are going to have to have a different mindset of how we're connecting with people. So you need to do with at least where we are today. If you're not here today with technology, the next five years, I am sorry to survive in this business, you need to get your savvy game up because we have a different generation coming down the pipe. 30, 35, 40 year olds, 22 year olds, whatever it is getting into the business that are already savvy, born into it, are getting into our real estate business. Okay? If you're a veteran, you need to step up your game. So please, please work on your savvy. Um, and again, we're here to help with those tools. We're here to give you the ideas. 
and obviously um, this is just the beginning of many different webinars that we do, whether it's coaching or anything else to help you. So let's rate yourself on your savvy. Your time. One of the most valuable things we have. And I still like to go back to the simplicity of the old phrase that says, there are many, many self-made millionaires, there are many very successful realtors in this business that have all started at some point from ground zero. Think about the most successful realtor you could think of. At one point in their career, they started off with nobody. No clients, no transactions. And they have the same amount of time, the same of a, amount of hours in a day that you and I both have. It's just what you do with your time. And I genuinely mean that. They are successful for many reasons. You are successful for many reasons. But it's the amount of time. How do you manage it? Do you show up to work and get through the day by kind of just dawdling in real estate? Oh, I had tons of home inspections and I got paperwork to do. That's great. But most successful agents in our business are always, always, always getting new business. That's where they're spending their time. If you get pummeled down with administrative stuff, administrative stuff is extremely important to get done in real estate. But if you're not out doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is getting new business, and managing your time to generate more income, you're wasting your time. Because the most successful ones, while you're sitting around dawdling in the office kind of making photocopies and doing kind of stuff that is not generating new business, others are. Just keep that in mind. They have the same 12, 14 hour, 5 hour, 8 hour work day that you have. No excuses. There are, there are men and women in this business that work 5 to 8 hours because they have children, families, and everything else that are making well over $100,000 somehow. And it's not because their market is any more magical. I mean, the market does have something to do with it. But it's how they manage their time, how they network with their clients, their image, their presence, how they handle personalities, their marketing, their sphere, and all the stuff I just went over from one through eight. Okay, so it's really about your time. It's precious. This is a simple one, but this is actually very important. Because I talk about technology all the time, but I'll tell you the very first thing, being a realtor mind first, is no matter how much tech savvy we have and how sharp we are with our tools and our gadgets, I will always tell you is that your customers actually have to like you and trust you. If they don't like you and trust you, a lot of times you're not getting the business no matter how savvy you are. So how likable are you? And this is going to be something that you need to make sure that whoever you're handing this sheet to when we're done is going to give you a fair analysis. That's why I think you might need to do an anonymous session. Just drop a blank form in the boxes and say, Without putting your name on top of this, please evaluate me as a realtor. Am I likable? Now, this might be some really hard, cold facts for you to see. This may be something that you may not want to see, but guess what? Someone's got to tell you. And if you're not, you got to work on it because there's, there's reasons for it. You might be doing something that you're not liked. Now, sometimes you don't have to be liked for certain reasons, but part of our customer relationship is they still need to like you and trust you. So then you might need to flip the switch and find ways to be likable. Find ways to be more helpful. If you're helpful, people tend to like you better. Okay, so are you likable? <laughs> this should have been my last one, the most important one, but I flipped it. I got one more I think is a little bit more important than this. But number 10, are you accountable? Have you mastered accountability? And I'm going to probably tell you I could guess your scores on this one. 95% of you probably are not accountable to anybody. And let me help you with understanding what I mean by this. Are you accountable? If I said to you today, and I look at you straight through this computer, or straight into this camera, and I'm sitting in front of you right now, visualize it, and I looked at you and I said, this Sunday, by this Sunday, you need to have three new listing appointments. And on Monday morning at 9 o'clock, I'm going to call you, and we're going to talk about your three appointments on when they are, where they are, and are you prepared to go on them. So you need three new ones by this Sunday, calling you Monday morning. Now, there's some of you might, that might take a little bit of a tone that says, yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't have time for that, I'm busy. Okay, but those of you who really want to make money and master this business, how do you feel about that? If I put you on the spot right now and said that, Monday morning you're getting a call from me personally. I want to hear about your three appointments, I want to know where they are, and I want to see your prep work for it. Does that put a little fire? Does that set the tone and say, man, i got to go to work? That's the same as going back to the school days when you said, i got a project due on Friday. You might have woken up on Thursday and said, oh my God, i got to get this done. But am I putting a little pressure on you to do it? 
How much different would your life be or your business be if I said just by this Sunday, get three new listing appointments? You think you're going to get a little bit busier? You think it might boost your confidence? Do you think it's going to make your business and you make more money? So, who are you accountable to? And you might say, okay, now, that sounds great, Jeff. I need someone to put a fire under my butt. Who, who should I be accountable to? Who's really going to be brutally honest with you? Who's going to really follow up with you on that Monday morning phone call? Because everyone that is really successful in this business, or I'm going to say most, at some point in their time, and sometimes on an ongoing basis, have a coach, some kind of an accountability person to say, you know what, Jeff, I need you to call me at 9 o'clock. I need you to call me and go, what did you do and why didn't you do it? And sometimes that is how we, we get motivated. That's how we operate. That's what makes me operate. When someone tells me, Jeff, hey, I need you to have three webinars done by next Friday, and I'd like to see the prep work by Wednesday night before it's close of business, Man, I'm motivated. I got time frames, I got deadlines. I'm up till midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, getting these done because now I got someone holding me accountable to what I do as a role. In real estate, sometimes we are self-employed. No one is really, really, unless you're, you know, your broker or manager has a system in place, but no one's gonna really hold you accountable, usually other than you. But a lot of times, because I know a lot of real estate people in this business, sometimes you can't hold yourself accountable. You can't. And I'm going to tell you the person to help to absolutely don't go to to make you accountable. Your significant other or spouse. Please don't do that. They That will create havoc that you don't want. Look, you may love that significant other or spouse, but they are not the person to be brutally honest with you and hold you accountable. Keep your family and that life out of it. Find someone that's neutral in the business. Maybe it's someone in your in your uh, business, in your, in your office. Maybe it's your broker or manager. Go to them and say, listen, I need you to hold me accountable, please. F push me. If not, seek others. I mean, we all do coaching. We're all here to do this kind of stuff. Um, find someone that can get you going, that can give you what you need to get motivated. I have one myself. Um, always had, I've had several over the years, but anybody who's really going to get the best out of you is who you need. Okay, so accountability. Now, I thought that was the most important one, honestly, but I've got one more I want to absolutely challenge you with, and it may sound a little funky, but I'm going to give it to you anyway is you need to master your fears. And you might say, I don't, I don't even know what that means, Jeff. What am I, I'm not afraid of anything. I, I'm a tough woman. I'm a tough man. No, no. Think about right now. Spend some time after this one. Don't even answer this one now. Is what keeps you up at night? Now, I'm talking in the real estate business. Not your personal life. Not your children. Not anything else going on. In real estate, what is the one single most thing that you absolutely hate doing, you fear it, and you just don't want to do it. Now, being around a little bit, 20 something years, I could pretty much tell you I know some of your answers right now. So let me just address one or two of them. I'm going to tell you probably the most common answer is probably prospecting. Prospecting is probably one of the biggest fears because that's probably one of the things we don't do a lot of. We're afraid of it. When I ask a room of 100 people live in the room when I'm doing training sessions or speaking engagements, I'll say, how many of you love like door knocking or prospecting, or whatever it's doing? It's very rarely I get two out of a hundred hands that go up. So that's probably one of the most biggest fears. Now, there might be other fears. It might be, I just hate doing paperwork. I just hate doing anything administrative. I hate doing maybe videos. I'm, someone said I should do videos for my business. I hate doing videos. I'm shy. Identify that fear. And then your number one goal should be, how do I absolutely do it at 100%? How do I absolutely get myself to that point? Um... That is where you need to get yourself going because this saying, and hopefully I can get this out of my head the right way, but the saying is, find, see if I can get this out, find what most people won't do. Find what most people are afraid of doing in real estate now. What do most agents hate to do? And then master it. If you can master that, you're going to be wildly successful. I promise you. Because if no one wants to do it and they don't like doing it and they're trying to find every excuse under the sun to not do it, and you could do it well, you're just going to crush everybody. It's just, it's, it sounds simple. I know it's really hard, but here's just a wake-up call to say, look, I'm just trying to tell you, these are the 11 things, in my opinion, that, and there might be others, but I was given 11. This is what I think, in, in the order that I gave them in, that you need to absolutely master to be successful. Now, reality says, and I know this, because I'm a pretty real people, uh, person, you're not going to do all this and master every one of them. So, you need to really give that scorecard some real serious tone. Give yourself your own ratings, create a blank one, put it in other people's boxes, 
and then see what others are saying. Honestly, that anonymous kick in the butt for 2011 is going to be a bit of a wake-up call, and you might actually be really upset by that. Man, I can't believe no one said I'm likable. Really? Yeah, you might not be likable. Guess what? Got to work on it. But if no one tells you this, and you didn't sit on this webinar today, and you go around for the next two or three years, and you didn't realize that no one likes you, but you're only hurting you. No one's giving you referrals because they don't like you. No one's sharing information with you because they don't like you. So you've got to do this wake-up call. You've got to go on an anonymous mission. You give it yourself your own score. Let someone else score it. Let them be brutally honest and say, look, don't put your name on the top of the sheet. Just stick it back in my mailbox upside down or put it in my, my box privately and just let me know what you think. And they may not be answered to all of them because there's a few things that you can only answer yourself. But the ones they can answer, you should know about. Okay? So, these are my 11 things as an agent. Um, next week, we're doing one of the top 11 things we think brokers need to be mastering for 2011. Um, on that note, I don't know if there's anything major question-wise. I, I have very limited time, but by all means, if you had something you emailed in, I'll try and help. Um, I will go to the next slide. Um, Lucy, is there any questions that come up that are something I should be answering right now in the next two minutes or so, or three minutes? No questions as of right now. A couple of comments if you want me to read those. Only if they're good comments. I don't want any of the bad ones. No, I'm just they're teasing. Good. <laughs> Obviously, I said that. Fear is the best one. So with OPT, I feel like you can't really master one to ten. Okay. And uh, another one says, you can turn these 11 things into affirmations. You can turn these 11 things into affirmations. Absolutely. If you, you're going to find your one or two weakest points, and if you can affirm them, that's one of your things you need to master, is to master how to affirm what I need to help with. And look, it's all self-belief. Our business is in our heads. It's between our two ears. We get up and go to work every day, or we get up and don't go to work every day. It's a matter of what you do with your time. Back to your time frame, okay? So hopefully these 11 were helpful. If we can find any other way to help you guys, that's what we're here for. And uh, my email address is here. Um, one thing I don't see here, too, but if, if you need my social media card to connect with me at any level, just go to jlob.com. That's J-L-O-B-B.com. It's got all my Facebook and my Twitter and everything else. And I am going to um, go back to our Inman conference and suck in all the new technology that's happening and make some good connections here. And um, I appreciate all of your time. We value you guys very, very much. So thank you on that note. And I'm signing off and back to Inman. Thank you, guys. And that's a wrap. So, not sure what your, your thoughts were there. I'm going to hang up the phone. Um, just have some fun doing it. We enjoy what we do. Um, very serious about how we have to, we as realtors, no matter who we are as realtors, what brand we're with, or what, these 11 things you really do need to work on. Um, and I do get excited about what I do because I believe in it. I've been doing it long enough. And we understand why we're really good at this business. We also understand why we're not so good at it. And it's very easy to get overwhelmed with this business. We can get sucked into, I was just down at one of the, the, the trade show floor and sitting in one of the sessions this morning, and I'm just watching realtors taking notes, and I can see their heads spinning. And what's going to happen with some of these is they're going to come out of this session, and they're going to spend hours trying to figure all this stuff out. And guess what they're forgetting to do? They're working on their blog and their website and this and that, and they're spending hours. Yet they didn't do anything to generate some new business just yet. You've got to find a balance of time to manage some of this, Take on two or three ideas and projects at a time. You can't do it all, I promise you. And you just got to focus on how to prioritize and make the best of your time, but never, ever, ever stop getting new business. On that note, I'm heading out to Inman, uh, back down to some sessions. It was fun. We'll see you soon. jlob.com to connect with me. Twitter, Facebook. J-L-O-B-B, -B, social media business card. See you there. Bye.